Hello there people of the internet. This video is probably going to rustle some jimmies. So this is the top five most expensively overpriced, way ridiculous mill stirrup rifles. And these are just the ones that I have inside of my collection. I could make a whole other video talking about things that I don't have specifically because they're ridiculously overpriced. And whenever I say overpriced, I'm comparing them to what it is that they actually are versus like other things that are out there on the market that do the same job that they're you know doing it better or well we'll make our comparisons as we go so first off one of the most overpriced by far mill surf rifles out there on the market is going to be the m1 carbine this chambered in 30 caliber carbine i think it sends oh i can't might remember what the ballistics of this cartridge are i'll probably put that up on screen if i remember to do so but essentially it has the same amount of power as a 357 magnum from a revolver coming out of a carbine length rifle essentially this is a pcc they tend to be unreliable uh you can get them to be reliable there's definitely reliable ones out there but this one right here is a really good example of one that just does not work all that well uh, even if you're getting yourself one that's beat up and not looking all that great, I mean, I've seen these go for over a thousand dollars plus for a worn out PCC with a caliber cartridge that is underpowered for what it is. I mean, it's definitely powerful enough to be able to do most things that people need to do. I wouldn't take it out in big game hunting or anything like that, but for all intents and purposes, it's a pistol caliber carbine. It's a pistol cartridge. So a pistol cartridge that's old and worn out, seen better days, being sold for over $1,000, you have a lot of really good options out there on the market to be able to get yourself something in a much more common cartridge that you'd probably be able to find. 30 caliber carbine is definitely getting more difficult to find. Uh, surplus for this is drying up. It's just, it's not worth the money. And $1,000 is on the low end. Like a lot of these are selling for $1,500 plus nowadays. So way way overpriced i have this one i don't foresee myself getting another one and that's just what i've got all right next one all right up next way too overpriced german car 98 rifles specifically ones from world war ii i'm sure a lot of you guys can vouch for saying that these right here are stupidly overpriced like this right here is a 1944 production car 98 in fairly decent condition i've shot this thing plenty of times on the channel got a little bit of rust right there gotta take care of that before it starts to pit because this right here is way too nice of a rifle to let fall apart bore on it's good uh i get good groupings out of this thing i'd say it's probably about a 3 moa rifle which is what to be expected for the time period jamming eight millimeter mauser it's got the aluminum butt plate on it i mean this right here is a pretty gosh darn decent rifle but these sell for like in this particular shape this particular year and whatnot this right here would probably like if i were to put it up for about i don't know a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars somewhere in there i'd probably get a taker that says oh yeah i'll buy that that's just what these are selling for it's not just car 98s it's like any world war ii anything whenever it comes to the german military I have no idea why the fascination with the German military is so intense, but if it's World War II and German military, it automatically, like, doubles in price. Like, if I were to go out and get myself essentially the same thing, like a Yugoslavian version of the Car 98, I can't quite remember. I think those are the M48s. Uh, if I were to go out and get myself one of those, I could pick that up for, like, $350. Essentially the same thing. Mauser 98 Action, the works. Like, they are very, very identical. Not quite interchangeable parts. There are some slight dimensional designs, but extraordinarily similar. However, because this one is World War II in Germany, and it's got the little eagles that have, I don't know, some sort of significance to them, automatically this right here becomes a dramatically more valuable rifle like way more valuable than the rifle actually should be so this right here is another stupidly stupidly overpriced rifle i have seen these sell at ridiculous prices way more than what it is that they're actually worth of course they say things are worth what people are willing to pay and people are willing to pay those prices because that's just what they're demanding this right here is just something that is highly sought after in the collector's community so that's another really overpriced rifle. All right, this one, 
Also overpriced, however, not nearly as bad as the other ones. We're having a look at the M1 Grand. Garand, however it is you feel like pronouncing that. Chamberlain 30 out 6 has an 8 round in block magazine, or uses an in block clip, which I'm sure you guys want to hear. Here's your grand ping. There you go. I bet a lot of you guys enjoyed that. So, this right here, uh, these typically run on the civilian market, uh, about that $1,500 price point. You can find them for cheaper. And there is the civilian marksmanship program. I'm sure somebody's going to go typing about that in the comments. But you got to jump through a bunch of hoops. You got to be a part of clubs. You got to fill out paperwork and whatnot. And, and like there's a huge process to be able to get one of these through the CMP. Or you could just pay the premium for them. So you can get these cheaper. But they tend to run about $1,500 for a half decently shaped one. There are some importers out there that are currently selling them for uh, around that $1,000 price point, but I'm not sure about those importers. They tend to be a little bit more on the sketchy side, cough, cough, looking at you, RTI. So with these running $1,500, you can go out and get yourself like a brand spanking new, not worn out. Uh, chambered in 308 slash 762 NATO M1A. If you want the platform, you got external magazines, you got better gas systems, you got more available ammunition. This right here is set up with 30 out 6 designed for M2 ball. You need a specific kind of 30 out 6 to run through this, or you got to update your gas system. And then you got to finagle your gas system every time you change ammunitions. It's just, it's a process. This right here. For fifteen hundred plus dollars for a normal M1 Grand, like a serviceable one, is just too much money. Like I said, you can find them for cheaper. This one right here, I picked up at a local gun store. I paid, I don't know, twelve hundred dollars for it, or somewhere around that ballpark. But like I said, around that ballpark, you could get yourself a much, you know, a, a newer, not shot out rifle. If someone's getting M1 Grand, they want it for collectability purposes. Typically, people aren't getting the M1 Grand for practical purposes, specifically because they want the M1 Grand for practical purposes. They're getting it for that collectability value as well. So, yeah, that's just way too much money for this right here. However, it's a fantastic rifle. So, yeah, I mean, I honestly don't regret spending the amount of money. Overpriced for what it is, but still worth it. This is the only thing that is on the list where I would say it's worth the price that you're still paying. But it is worn out old surplus that was made God knows how many years ago. You go out and get yourself something brand spanking new for the same price point. Alright, there's that military surplus thing. These aren't in any order, by the way. Like, I'm not going in any real order here. This is just me in the order that I pulled them out of my gun safe. So up next... The Mosin Nagant series of rifles. I don't have to say anything about these. They used to sell for under $100, and there's a whole supply demand thing. These were still being imported back then. But they absolutely skyrocketed in price simply because people started really wanting these because they found out they were really good rifles for not a lot of money. And they still have that, uh, oh, what would you call it? That old school feeling of the Mosin, but charged at price points that aren't they're, they're like these are just way too ridiculously overpriced for what it is that they are for the price point like typically if you're getting a refurbished 9130 bottom of the barrel like russian refurbished mass surplus mosin nagant rifle you're gonna end up getting one of those for like eh, four to five hundred dollars nowadays uh you can spend more money on it you can go out and get yourself finished rifles which fetch stupid amounts of money but those are actually really nice rifles especially compared to the mosin 9130 this right here is a carbine m44 this is a good example of one that is stupidly overpriced i have no idea why the carbine variants of the mosin are way way more valuable than the Mosin 9130. I think that's just because there's a lot less of these floating around, but I mean, come on, man. Like it, it doesn't justify basically doubling the cost. I've seen these sell anywhere from 800 to a thousand dollars. Absolutely nuts. Of course, all these mill serps, you can get them for cheaper. I'm sure somebody's going to go into the comments and tell me how they picked up one of these a week ago for like $250 at, I don't know, some pawn store somewhere. Good for you, buddy. But on the commercial market, that's the typical selling price point, and it's ridiculous the amount of money that people are willing to spend on something like this. That $800 plus will get you a really, really nice modern rifle that takes modern ammo 
that's not rimmed, is something that you can mount an optic onto, like there's just much better options out there for that price point than something like this, unless of course you're like me, then a Mel Serp collector and you just enjoy this type of stuff. So Mos Nagant definitely, absolutely wholeheartedly going to be on the list. I have no idea why these raised so dramatically much in price. It's just supply and demand. There's a lot of people who have that demand for cheap Mosins and they're just not there. So de the demand is still there and they're like, well, I guess I can afford the $450 to get me a Mosin because I really want one. And it's just things like that just continue to drive the price up and up and up. So ridiculously overpriced rifle for what it actually is. This is another really good example, especially the carbines or the finished Mosins or anything like that. You get yourself really nice modern manufactured stuff for the price point. All right, this right here is this rifle. Moving on to the next one. All right, this is another overpriced rifle, but a lot like the M1 Grand, I'd say it's still probably worth the amounts of money that you're spending on it. This is the Ishapur 2A or 2A1. I don't care which variant you have. Uh, essentially, it's a number one Mark III look-alike. You can very distinctly tell that from the front nose cap. But it's chambered in 7.62 NATO, which is dramatically easier to get your hands on uh, than something like 303 British. It's going to be a lot cheaper, too. 303 British for modern production, whenever you can find it, is like a buck fifty or shot now versus something like this, which is surplus on the market. You can find it very readily and very easily. And it is, oh, I don't know... 60 to 75 cents a shot depending on how much it is that you buy and etc etc we're not talking about the nuances of the ammunition but normal 303 rifles if we're talking like a number four mark one or a number one mark three depending on the year condition etc etc 500 bucks will get you one of those versus something like this where it's going to run more around 750 or so you would have to shoot hundreds of rounds of ammunition in order to reaccumulate your costs from just getting the 303 Brit with, you know, a couple of 303 British rounds uh, versus something in 7.62 NATO. The ammunition is much more available in about half the cost, which is what makes it so desirable. But like I said, you'd have to really shoot a lot of ammunition in order to justify spending a lot more money on the rifle. I mean, we're talking a 50% minimum upcharge of these rifles. I have seen them sell for even more than that. Now, if you can manage to get your hands on one of these for cheaper than that price point, then hey, thumbs up, good for you. These do take external mags, they got the short bolt throw, they got all the perks of the Lee Enfield system, so definitely has its benefits, and we have the available ammunition, definitely a fantastic little rifle, and it is overpriced for the price point that you're spending. You're spending way more money on it just because people know that this right here is the more desirable version of the Lee Enfield system simply because of that 762 NATO and chambering and the ammunition availability and the ammunition cost factor. So because people know that, they know that people are willing to spend more money on something like this, and they do. As a result, we see a much higher price point for this particular version of the infield system than other ones. Well, I guess it'd be a Lee system. Whatever. Semantics. Anyway, folks, there, there is my five overpriced mill serps that I have in my collection. There are plenty of others out there. So I'm going to go ahead and just... I'm just going to end this before I get even more spicy. Thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. I'll see you guys on the next episode. I've done this.
Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> Poor man's Garen. <laughs> it's a shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream. <laughs>